Yes, I was getting updated by Uganda's leading daily the new vision on the status of the lockdown that is affecting all of us, all over the world. It also includes the extension of curfew. I'm glad that the uh, government has not uh, restricted the movement of bicycles up to that period of 2 p.m bicycle is my means of transport currently. My name is Tony Jofre Owana and uh, I just want on behalf of Owana PBA to ask all of you, especially in Uganda, to treat the measures that government is putting in place as Christians would treat Noah's Ark. You don't enter the Ark by force, but you remain out, the floods will find you there. We are still continuing with our series on Rwanda and uh, we acknowledge your requests for a number of uh, clips. For instance, you want to see the letter Biarimana visiting Uganda, as I said in 1988, which we shall have. Uh, some of you wanted to insist that we show that first, but uh, allow, us to, allow us to be in charge. So today we are going to give you a look at the peace accord that was signed in Arusha on 4th August 1993 between the government of Rwanda led by Major General Juvenal Abiyarimana and the Rwanda Patriotic Front led by, mm -hmm, by not Paul Kagame, by Colonel Alexis Kanyarengu. Maybe some of you don't know this. And that's why some of you keep making the mistake of saying that the RPF is or was a 2 organization. Colonel Alexis Kanyarengi has never been a 2 Indeed, he was a Hutu. Colonel Alexis Kanyarengi is a Hutu and was a Hutu even when he was chairman of RPF. So, you may argue with reason and with evidence indeed that the majority of RPA fighters were Tusi. Very good. But to describe it as a Tusi organization might be dodging a few facts. Now, the talks were brokered by Zaire President Mobutu Seseseku Kuku Ngubendu Mopepe Wazabanga. Hey, what a name. And we are held in Arusha, hosted by Tanzania President Ali Hassan Mwini. They lasted the whole year, and in the end, they didn't achieve much. There were a number of uh, observer nations attending that great day, 4th August. And this included Uganda, and President Museveni was there, as you will see. The OAU was represented by uh, Secretary General Salim Ahmed Salim. The United Nations was represented. Uh, the Chairman of Organization of African Unity, which was replaced by African Union, was represented. Senegal's Abdou Diof, he was represented. There was France, there was Belgium, there was uh, Egypt, there was uh, United States of America, and Germany. Now the talks open uh, when the Foreign Minister of Tanzania Honorable Regasira explains briefly that the talks have not been smooth. People almost came to, hmm? almost. Then he invites uh, President Ali Hassan Mwenye to speak. And after Ali Hassan Mwenye speaks, the actual signing takes place. This is a historical moment relived by Wanapedia. But this video again we pay cuts to the presidential press unit of Uganda for having captured these moments. 
Now we invite you to the signing process.
is a great pleasure for the government and the people of, the, of Tanzania to welcome all our invited guests gathered in this August hall to, to witness this memorable occasion. Today's ceremony is the culmination of the concerted efforts and protracted negotiations of the last 12 months. All along, the negotiations have been characterized by trying moments and challenges. However, given our firm commitment to accomplish our noble mission, we have endured all these hardships, and finally we have reached our destination. It also reflects the firm determination of the facilitator, represented by his able ambassador, Amin Pungwe, the observer countries, the Organization of African Unity, and the United Nations to assist the negotiating parties in finding a permanent solution to the problem. It has to be noted here that one of the positive outcomes of the Arusha peace process is the restoration of confidence and trust among the two parties. This could be said as a continuing one of critical factors which are necessary for the Arusha peace process has instilled hope among the Rwandese people and they are now determined to guard jealously the long-awaited peace and stability. Excellencies and dear brothers, my fellow heads of state and the prime ministers, Colonel Kanyirengwe, chairman of the Rwandese Patriotic Front, His Excellency Dr. Salu Mohammed Salim, the OAU Secretary General. His Excellency Ambassador Papa Louis Fall, Special Envoy of President Abu Diouf, representatives of the United Nations Secretary General, Honorable Ministers, Your Excellencies, representatives of observer countries, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I would like, at the outset, to extend a fraternal hand of welcome to all heads of state and all other dignitaries who, despite their tight and important schedules, found time to be with us here today in Arusha. You have all done me and my fellow Tanzanians a great honor by your presence to witness this historic occasion. It is my hope that all agreements, it is my hope that all, all arrangements for your stay in Arusha and your participation in this landmark event have been to your satisfaction. <coughs> I should also like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the parties the Rwandese conflict, all negotiators, mediators, and experts who for 12 months worked tirelessly, tirelessly to ensure a fruitful conclusion to the negotiating process. It is due to their patience, their perseverance, their dedication, and their wisdom that we are here able today to celebrate the first fruits of African conflict resolution. I, can, I congratulate them all for this outstanding contribution to peace and brotherhood in our region and the African continent. I would like in particular to commend the parties to the conflict as represented 
by President Haibere Mana and Colonel Kanyare Mwe for their patriotism, for being forthcoming, for the spirit of goodwill, and the spirit of give and take. I should also mention the invaluable contribution of His Excellency Marshal Mobutu Sese Seko, President of the Republic of Zaire, who in his capacity as mediator played a key role in initiating and conducting the peace negotiations. I would also like to thank the governments of Burundi, Uganda, Zaire, Senegal, Belgium, France, Germany, and the United States of America for accrediting observers to the Arusha talks from the very beginning to the end. They have now committed themselves to stopping once and for all the blood that had sadly been flowing in their country. This day marks the beginning of a new era of peace and harmony, which should enable the people of Rwanda to lead normal lives and concentrate on improving, on improving the quality of their lives. The event portends well for the return of Rwandese refugees to their motherland and the reunion of families and the loved ones. Today is equally a great day for me personally and for the government and people of Tanzania. Throughout the conflict, we were organizing over the tragedy that was unfolding among our brothers and sisters. And we considered it our moral duty to do what we could to help end the conflict. Our satisfaction and pleasure at this outcome is without bound. I'm sure this event is equally gratifying to all the neighboring countries to Rwanda, which have shared in this agony and helped to facilitate the negotiating process. It is my ardent hope that peace in Rwanda will now enable us to concentrate on cooperation in this region. Today is a great day for Africa, a day that portends well for African diplomacy, reconciliation, and mediation. The signing of today's agreement is a vindication of Africa's ability and capacity to resolve conflicts among us in a brotherly manner. Let us build on and expand this capacity for conflict, conf for conflict resolution, which has enabled us to witness this great day, this great event today. I should also, in that connection, like to commend the OAU Secretary General, who, proceeding from his confidence in the African capacity for conflict resolution, has worked tirelessly to ensure that we put in place the necessary mechanism for conflict uh, prevention, management, and resolution. But having a mechanism in place is one thing. And having the political will to use a mechanism effectively is quite another. In conclusion, allow me, Your Excellencies, to use the analogy of the birth of a child. As family members await the birth of a child, anxiously, anxiety grows each day. As soon as the child is born, the mother forgets all the dis discomforts of pregnancy and the pain of childhood, of childbirth, and she instead marvels with great pleasure at the new life she has brought forth. So let it be with the Rwandese peace agreement 
that will be signed in a short moment. It is my ardent hope that at last we shall have crossed the Rubicon towards a new era in the African capacity to prevent, manage, and resolve conflicts amongst ourselves. And as for the, the, as for the rest of us who played a part in reaching this agreement, our role is not over yet. We should all continue to take an interest in the developments in Rwanda and be ready to assist the process of national reconciliation. In particular, I strongly appeal to the United Nations Security Council to act speedily in deploying a neutral international force in Rwanda. Your Excellencies, let me end by once again thanking you greatly for being here in Arusha to witness this great event today. And I sincerely, with all my heart, congratulate the government of the Republic of Rwanda and the Rwandese Patriotic Front for this great day. Thank you all for your kind attention. The signing ceremony begins. As the Tanzanian Foreign Minister observed, putting structures for peace in place is one thing. The willingness to make them work is another. The talks were signed, and the ceasefire that had been agreed upon 
was almost instantly broken. I think we are ending there today, but prepare for part two and part three, where more of the details of what transpired on that day took place. Keep tuned to Anapedia, the one-stop center for Uganda's history, the region, and probably the rest of the world, as you shall see. Behind there, as usual, is Herbert Semiano, whom I prevent from you seeing. But uh, one day when I go the way of all flesh, maybe he will come. But we are trying to push that day as far away as is possible. Thank you again for sticking to the requests of your uh, leaders to stay at home and stay safe. Tony Geoffrey Owana for Owanapedia.